Hello everyone and welcome back to DCS World, where the developers have decided to offer a free trial for the next month. The way the free trial works is that every two days, they will feature one of their payware packages uh, for everybody to try for free. And all the packages that are featured for the next month or so will be available at a 50% discount. So here we have the F16 module. And uh, I did go through the startup procedure tutorial, but I'm not going to show all of that. They only had two tutorials. They had the startup uh, tutorial and they had the uh, taxi and takeoff tutorial. So unfortunately, not the weapon tutorial, weapons tutorials, which I was most interested in, of course. But I went through this and learned how to start. It's not very hard to start up, obviously. So the F-16 is for free on March 18th and 19th. And then it's the F-A-18, which I will also enjoy trying out because I don't have it. I don't have the F-16 either, of course. But after that, it's the F-14, which I do have. And the JF-17, I don't have. A-10C, I don't have. Harrier, I don't have. Uh, so I'm going to have a lot of fun for next month, basically. So it's nice of them to do this to occupy us. And I'll try and make videos of all the planes. And uh, so in some cases, uh, the days are occupied by the maps. The Persian Gulf map and this Nevada map, but I own the Nevada map. So here I am just having fun with the F-16, uh, seeing how it flies. It is very smooth and enjoyable to fly, of course, with the fly-by-wire and everything, very relaxing. But then I have to wonder, I mean, is the complexity really worth the money for me? You know, I, I, I will contemplate getting something during this, this month, but which plane? Which plane? Will it be the F-16? It's good value. It hasn't been this cheap ever. Uh, it's at 40 bucks right now. The F-A-18 is tempting too. I've always liked the F-A-18. And uh, there is the Super Carrier Bundle. With the F-A-18 and the Super Carrier Bundle, that's 50 bucks right now. Um, so that's a possibility. But there are other planes that I like. The Spitfire, for instance. And we will see. I will take this as a legitimate free trial with the intention of purchasing one module. The F-16 is a cute plane. I always like the F-16. It's got that grinning smile. But, um, yeah. But it, do it doesn't have the complexity of the F-14, obviously. Then again, it's, it's cheaper than the F-14. F-14 is only 20% off for this month, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I paid more than that anyway. So I appreciate some of the details. I like the little goal light. I wonder if it'll ever blink no-go during this when I crash. I will crash, by the way. Uh, that will happen. F-16s may have been damaged in the course of this video. So the Nevada map, I guess I am sort of showcasing as we head into Las Vegas. I'm just seeing how well it controls. And again, it's very fun to fly. Not nearly as harrowing as the F-14. I should mention that I did this all during a live stream, so that might reduce the frame rates. Altogether, I found it fairly smooth. After the live stream, I did go on to YouTube to find tutorials for the weapons, and I did find many of them, but especially on the Grim Reapers channel, which of course does a good job on most things. So, I will try out the weapons before the free trial is over, hopefully. The weapon systems are always the most complicated thing. Ultimately, starting it up, at least in the case of the F-16, is not very difficult. And flying it, obviously, is not that difficult. Though, full disclosure, I was uh, drinking a Guinness at the time, and I don't hold my alcohol very well. So, we will see some evidence of that, I guess. So after the flying around and trying it out, I decided I needed to land at McCarran because I was running out of fuel. And we had used the afterburner quite profusely, and I'm not carrying any external tanks on this flight. I did not start it up on this particular flight uh, manually, but uh, the next time I will started up manually and that has one little quirk I'll mention once we get there. This time I started off on the runway. A little bit off to the right and left there for some reason. 
But yeah, as far as lying is concerned, it's very easy. Definitely nothing like landing the F-14. Though I'm making it look harder than it needs to be. <laughs> uh, come on, come on. It actually gets a lot of lift, so it's a little bit tricky in that respect. I guess I was duped by its short wings into thinking that it didn't have that much lift, but of course it has those nice contours and I'm sure it all helps out as far as its lift performance. Anyway, so here I go trying to remember the startup procedure. I'm only doing the bare minimum here, of course, uh, just enough to make sure I can get off the ground safely, <laughs> not doing all the radar or the checks and all that. So there I go putting the throttle into idle with the engine started. Really easy start procedure. The one quirk that I mentioned earlier is that after closing the canopy, the canopy light doesn't go out. And it didn't do that. It didn't go out even during the tutorial. And I thought I did all the things in the tutorial. I looked in the controls for some sort of canopy lock. I know the MiG-21 had that, but um, I couldn't find anything like that. So I just had the canopy light, warning light on the whole time. It didn't seem to kill me. Uh, I'll kill myself in other ways. Uh, for instance, uh, it's just sort of a little bit squirrely if I if you try and take off like this, you know, without stopping on the runway first. I I just went on the runway and immediately throttled up, but yeah, it's actually not such a good idea if you don't want to off-road it. <laughs> um, so here we go. At least uh, at least it didn't get stuck on the dirt or anything like that. I don't treat my planes very well, let's face it. So this is the Dubai map, this is the Persian Gulf map. I decided to try it out on next. And I was aiming for those world island things, these guys, which form a world map. Didn't get a very good look at them though as I go higher. South America seems rather small. There are many entertaining things you can do on the Persian Gulf map. And I do a, a tiny fraction of them, really. And one of them really is going down this little highway avenue thing as low as you can. Though I don't think I was going as low as I can here. It was live and I was chatting with people during the live stream too. So. Please forgive me for not being as much of a daredevil as I as I could have been. But yeah, this is always fun. Uh, except with all the stuff it's rendering, obviously, the f and the fact that I'm streaming and recording at the same time, frame rates are a little bit off. Aside from seemingly not having all the tutorials for us on this free trial, they didn't have the other liveries, it seemingly was just this one. Is the only livery I was able to choose from unless I was missing something uh, in the normal livery selection area. Okay, so uh, here is probably the most dangerous thing I ended up with, uh, short of actually killing myself. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't want to pull more than 2 G's negative, negative 2 G's. And yeah, I got into a little bit of trouble with that. I don't know, I think there's a way of turning off certain limits, but I don't know if that's one of them. But in general, it seems limited to negative 2 Gs. So I wasn't able to push down on a stick to force the nose up when I was inverted. And I had to quickly flip around, that's why. Anyway, I decided to try to see if it could reach its service ceiling, which is 59,000 feet. And you can see we are supersonic there. And trying to get up there. But we are carrying the external fuel tank still. So ultimately I got pretty high. I got beyond 58,000 feet, pretty close to the service ceiling height. And it seemed to be giving out at that point. But I didn't quite hit 59,000. Still I think with the tanks and all, that's understandable. And I decided to plunge at the ground and see if I could pull up, but I couldn't pull up in time. 
I actually sort of expected stuff to rip apart from aerodynamic stress or something, but that didn't happen. Uh, we did smash into the ground, of course. And then I proceeded to do some damage model testing. Uh, at least that's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> well, uh, that wing seems pretty steady, but then, in flight, off it goes. So that was interesting, and then we checked the log afterwards, and I wasn't shot down or anything. So it seemed to be from the stress of knocking against the ground earlier. So that's an interesting thing to note. After that, I decided to have a go at reaching its maximum speed. Well, not necessarily its maximum speed. I was just testing how fast I could go. And so this time we're flying without external tanks or any payload, as you can see there. So all clean, but that means we have a limited amount of internal fuel too. So we have to get going fast. And ultimately I got to Mach 1.6 was the mark. And that was at 29,000 feet or thereabouts. Uh, it's possible if I went higher it could go faster, but at least I was sort of expecting Mach 1.6 anyway. I looked at Wiki, it said it was able to go Mach 2, but I don't know under what conditions, uh, to be honest. Just getting it to Mach 1.6 that consumed quite a lot of fuel, so it was basically getting it that fast and then going back home. And so here we are landing. Uh, me doing my lackadaisical job as usual. But you know, I mean, I didn't uh, I didn't break anything on landing. I thought that was good enough. I sort of nudged it back towards the center line because it was somewhat ugly. Uh, but, you know, it's intact, right? But then, in a fit of over-exuberance, I taxied a little bit too fast and turned a little bit too sharp. And we lost that left wing again. So there you have it, my first antics in the F-16. I sure don't treat them well, do I? But yeah. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.